Hey guys, Diane Sykes here, and I want to talk to you today about running free of pain. And those of you who know me know that when I say run free, to me, that's my way of life. That stands for everything that I believe in. But today I want to talk about running free of pain. And again, as a runner, I've been through this vicious loop that I'm sure you guys can relate to where you just run, pain, injury, run, pain, injury, and you seem to just cut, like you can't quite ever break free of it. Well, let me tell you something. As an exercise physiologist in the past 20 years, I have worked with more patients and I know and I understand the science of it, but I'm also a runner and I understand the emotion of this and how hard it can be. So my journey is really one of, I've experienced it, I've walked in those shoes or run in those shoes, but then also tried to study the science of it and then fuse them together to come up with real solutions for us as runners. We are a unique breed, for sure. And the goal of wanting to run free, man, free of pain, free of, free of just everything is so important to us. So how do we run free of pain? Well, first let's talk about that loop and then I'm going to give you three tips right now to start the process of running pain-free. Here's the loop, right? So you run and run and run. And then you go out one day and you're like, ooh, little twinge, that doesn't feel good. But what do we do as runners? <laughs> run anyway, right? Keep running. That pain gets a little worse, ultimately turns into an injury. So we find ourselves at the doctor's office, we get a diagnosis, and we go to physical therapy. And we go through the treatment. Physical therapy is great. I strongly believe in it and its effectiveness. We do the treatment, go through six weeks, let's say, do everything that the therapist tells us to do, except for one thing. The physical therapist says, you need to rest. That does not compute with a runner, right? So maybe three, four weeks, you do rest, but then you're just itching. I mean, it's like in your blood, you've got to get out for a run. So, secrets between us. We run too early, right? So we get out there again. Before we know it, we're experiencing the pain. We're back in the injury cycle. And here we go again on the loop PT, blah, blah, blah. We just keep doing it. We never seem to get off of it. Well, I can tell you from experience, there is a way that we can get off of it. But we just have to kind of create a new rhythm with our running. My biggest nagging injury for years was always plantar fasciitis. That was my, my Achilles heel, so to speak. In this past year, not only did I really eradicate it, but I, I can say now I've run, I've PR'd by over four minutes in my half marathon time. Why? Because it feels so good to be free of pain. I get out there and it's not just that I feel good in my body, that I don't have the pain. It's that I don't take it for granted and that energizes me. I'm so fueled up. I'm so fired up. It just feels wonderful and I want you guys to experience that too. So here are my three tips. Tip number one, most running injuries although they may be specific to what's going on in the injurious joint or muscle, so much of what we experience in terms of running pain comes from a lack of mobility in our ankles. Yup. So I'm going to drop a little science on you. As a physiologist, my number one focus with anybody but particularly with runners is making sure that I preserve the integrity of the ankle joint. I'm not going to bore you with the science, but I'm just going to simply say this. Think about what your ankle does. That bad boy has a lot to do on a daily basis. And then you throw running on top of it. So we are pulling the earth under us with every stride we take in a run. And sometimes that earth is not stable. And the ankle not only has to pull the earth, but has to maneuver and shift and shape to make sure that we don't tip over right? So it has to be able to roll and glide and evert and invert. It is a highly mobilized joint. It can do a lot of things. 
but life gets in the way sometimes and us ladies we wear high heels on occasion we sit too long we sleep with covers that are too tight on our feet and guess what happens we lose our ankle mobility not a good thing because once we start to lose the ankles ability to move and maneuver us through the world our other joints have to compensate for that let's just go up one joint to the knee and take a look at the knee if you're experiencing knee pain yeah you might legitimately have an injury in the knee but my job as an exercise physiologist is to is to get a little deeper and uncover the underlying cause of that knee pain and it may not necessarily be the knee at all but if we lose our joint mobility around the ankle our knees have to compensate for that we still have to be able to move and if we're runners we still got to be able to run so think about the knee joint for a second right what does the knee do not a whole heck of a lot it's an extremely important joint but it has a very different job than the ankle the knee simply just extends and flexes right why? Because the knee's job is to stabilize our bodies during movement. So when we plant our foot down and our ankle feels that surface, the knee then locks itself, boom, like a strong stabilizer to take that compressive force of movement and say, we got this, that our frame, that our organs can stand firmly on top of something, that we've got a leg to stand on. That's the knee joint being a powerful stabilizer. But if our ankle is rigid and our ankle can't capture our surface well, then our knee joint has to compensate for that. So it starts to stretch outside of its comfort zone. And guess what happens? Those ligaments are like, whoa, they start to tear. They start to stretch. The meniscus is sliding around in there and it's not gonna paint a pretty picture for the knee right and can definitely turn into things like patellofemoral syndrome or or worse injuries where we actually do serious damage to the knee joint itself so what do we do we got to focus on ankle mobility it's got to be a huge part of our program as runners right it including stretching it and strengthening around it that's tip number one focus on your ankles tip number two strength train yep if you could take 10% of your running time and reallocate that to strength training, you'd be injury free right there, right? Most of us runners, we just want to get out. We just want to run. Why? Because it feels good. We clear our head. We get out. We get out in nature. A day like this, who doesn't want to be out there, right? You want to be lifting weights around. Maybe it's boring. Maybe you don't even know what to do. You just get in there, you scratch your head, but it's so easy to just put your running shoes on and go. I get that. And if I had my choice, yeah, I'd rather run. Absolutely for sure. But I've trained myself to not only just strength train, but to really love it because I know it's, it's a means to an end. I know that the more I strengthen my muscles, the less likely I'm going to carry risk around my body for injury when I run. And it's not just getting in and doing some leg strengthening exercises, calling it a day. It starts with the trunk, making sure our, our base here is strong, low back muscles, core muscles, right? Lower back, but upper back as well. The way that we hold our neck while we run, the way that we can pump when we run so that we're not wasting too much energy because we just simply don't have the muscle strength. We can get tired. We can fatigue so much more quickly if we don't have the muscle strength. And if we are fatiguing more quickly and we are still getting out for those long runs, guess what? We're opening ourselves up to a world of hurt. No good. So that's tip number two. Take 10% of your running time and just, just reallocate it to strength training. What does that mean? If you're running three to four hours a week, then take 30 minutes and do some strength training. Most of us are running more than that, 
So I'm talking about two to three days a week, half an hour tops where you're doing hardcore strength training activity. Boom. Here's the last tip, guys. And this one, it's for the mind. How can your mind beat injury? That sounds a little cuckoo, right? But again, I've been on my own personal journey with this for 25 years, since I was a kid. One of the things I've learned about injury is that we have a lot more control over our pain than we realize. And I'm not talking about like muscle up, no pain, no gain, that kind of nonsense. I'm saying that when we are in an injurious state, there's psychology to that. And we can either spend our mental focus thinking about the pain and the injury and worrying about it and fixating on it and getting into a hopeless mindset of like, oh my God, I'm going to be injured forever. This is going to be my thing. I'm just going to be in pain. This is it. And just literally letting anxiety take over. Or we can shift our mental focus and just simplify it down to this. Have a little mantra of I'm sending healing energy to my injurious tissue. Visualize I'm sending oxygen and nourishing blood flow to my injured tissue. It's getting better by the minute. Okay, visualization out on a race course is pretty powerful stuff, wouldn't you say? Use that for your injury. Picture that damaged tissue healing. So your mantra might be a little bit different, but, but stop fixating on what's broken and start fixating on the fixin'. Okay, because mind does truly prevail over matter. Find a mantra. I'll tell you another one of mine. I like to say to myself, pink to me is very healing and nurturing. And, and it, it, there's something spiritual to me about the color pink. That's why I wore it today. And I always say I'm sending pink light to the pain. I'm, I'm flooding pink light around my injury. And I do that as often as I possibly can, and especially every time I start to go down that dark road of like, oh, not this again, oh, I'm fresh, oh, and, and all that negative talk. It's just going to make things worse. Give yourself a fighting chance. Those are my three tips, guys, to run free of pain. I hope you like this video. If you want more tips on running free, on being a trailblazer, please visit my YouTube page or my Facebook like page at Diane Sykes Fitness. You can also check out my website at www.dianesykes.com. I'd love to see you there. I'm always here to help. Thanks guys for tuning in.